Welcome back to Ask Allison. Here's today's question. I started with a very broad niche and I'm slowly narrowing it down as I go, but now I have clients on the books that don't necessarily fit my ideal niche because I wasn't sure what it was initially. How can I navigate this? Would you recommend referring these clients out or continuing to work with them until they naturally transition out of therapy? So first I'd like to thank Therapy Notes for sponsoring Ask Allison. Therapy Notes is a comprehensive practice management system. It keeps everything in one place, your notes, your calendar, insurance and billing, practice paperwork, your video conferencing. You can have a totally paperless office all under one system. It costs less than one session per month and it prevents that documentation anxiety so many of us get. I love that you can call and talk to an actual human if you have a question. And it's not just me, the highest, it's the highest rated EHR on Trustpilot. So if you've been dragging your feet about a practice management system or you're unhappy with your current EHR, definitely check out Therapy Notes. You can get two months free if you use the promo code ABUNDANT at checkout at therapynotes.com. All right, so my main question for this person is, do you feel like you're helping these clients progress or recover? If so, my personal experience would be to continue working with them until they graduate from therapy. Niches are really great, but they are not dictates. The very most important factors are if you're effective and if you enjoy working with them. Ideal clients, um, they're a marketing strategy. It's not necessarily who you're supposed to fill your practice with. If you want to, you absolutely can. Uh, but a lot of people hear that they should be marketing to their ideal clients and they feel like they're not doing it right. If, they're, if they have some clients who don't fit that mold. And one of the absolute most freeing parts of private practice is that you're the boss. So you get to say, you can have 100% ideal clients. You could have 10% ideal clients. I mean, 10% would be a little weird. They probably wouldn't be ideal, but um, basically like you get to say what percentage of these clients you bring in. Let's say you don't feel effective with this, like a particular client. I would encourage you to seek supervision. I'd consider referring to someone you know who does really amazing work with their particular struggle. I find that we are for, far more likely to hold on to clients we don't do our best work with when the phone isn't ringing a ton. And in that, we are prioritizing our security over our clients' progress. So I, I don't say that to shame anyone, um, even though if it applies to you, it may feel like a gut punch for me to say that. I really genuinely want us all to create fulfilling, effective, profitable practices. And I know that it can absolutely benefit not just you and not just your clients, but your whole community when you do that. So find the therapists that work with the clients that you don't excel at. So you always have somebody you can refer to that you know does great work. We dive a lot more into this in the Abundance Party. We have one of the many courses in there is called uh, know your niche. So we talk more about niches in there. It's $69 a month to get into the party and it teaches you everything you need to know to build the practice that you want. We're going to link to that to make it easier to get to. Today's free worksheet is a quick diagram of the difference between your ideal client and your niche. Um, sometimes a visual explanation helps. And so this is for those of you who are visual learners. If you have questions for Ask Allison, I would love to answer them. Shoot me a DM over on Instagram where I'm abundance underscore practice underscore building.